I am announcing an interim constitution under which our battered nation can shelter after years of dictatorship in order to heal its wounds, restore its strength, and enjoy the first fruits of its newfound freedom. After any dark period uh, in history, and especially in the Philippines, uh, institutions have been left uh, very weak, destroyed in, in, in many aspects, and therefore it is important to rebuild the institutions. And that is an essential component of transitional justice, an important component of ensuring that uh, what happened in the past will never happen again. It's important to reform uh, institutions that are the root cause of the conflict. If we listen uh, to everyone and think about the institution that part of the conflict, and then we can reform, it will be sustainable peace. I think the reason that Sri Lanka has had a long history of conflict is because it has not really looked back and learnt from its history of conflict. Um, and therefore, I think it continues to uh, function with inherent uh, mechanisms and structures and attitudes that keep the conflict alive. Human rights treaties have affirmed the state obligation to ensure that violations are stopped and prevented from happening again. The institutional reform that is needed will depend on the context and the role that different institutions have played in the violations. Reforming the security sector includes separating the role of military and police, ensuring civilian control and limiting the scope of military courts. Sebenarnya yang diinginkan adalah memang ada upaya-upaya untuk secara sungguh-sungguh untuk mencoba betul-betul untuk menghilangkan peluang berulangnya kembali kejadian seperti yang telah terjadi di masa konflik Aceh di masa depan. Tetapi kita tahu bahwa institusi-institusi bertanggung jawab terutama Polisi militer mereka berada di level nasional, sehingga perubahan kebijakan atau perubahan institusi masih jauh dari apa yang kita harapkan. Many of the institutional reforms concerned, of course, the security sector. For example, in order to ensure that the security reform are actually um, briefed and have a very important orientation on human rights and international humanitarian law. We also believe that the security sector should have a very firm structure on accountability for any of the violations of human rights in IHL. So one of them was that pulling back the military and uh, reappointing uh, civil administrative structures, especially in the war areas. Um, and uh, reappointing some of the independent commissions, uh, like the police commission, the human rights commission. One has to look at uh, the machinery that was involved in making those violations possible, the machinery that um, encouraged a cycle of violence, uh, the systems um, that ensured that um, those involved in carrying out uh, such violations continue to be rewarded and promoted through the ranks. National constitution and laws must recognize the human rights of all. Sri Lanka is also going through this whole process of looking at constitutional reform. And it's very encouraging to see that we are looking at a reform in a very fundamental way from the constitution upwards because that's the basic legal document that we have. Uh, it has been interesting to note that as a result of the public consultations around constitutional reform that voices that have not been otherwise heard have found space within the constitutional reform. In judiciary reform 
we can see slightly different when we put a lot on uh, dialogue with them how how thing has been are uh, not according to the law of laws and also some kind of discrimination against some population like the Muslim accused of national security. There are some lower standards than the normal criminal procedures, but the big reform or something that has been uh, widespread discussed in that institution is very limited. The judiciary is responsible for uh, pursuing ac accountability and oftentimes, in times of conflict, sadly, the judiciary uh, collaborates with the perpetrators to cover up um, these crimes. When the media has been controlled by the security uh, sector, all these news are negative to the security sector, so when the court is delivers such a uh, discouraging uh, military performance, they are not putting in the front page. We can't even find it in the mainstream media. So often state media is involved in, uh, in propaganda and serves to fuel and encourage violence. Um, and even um, uh, private media organs sometimes collaborate with certain uh, political factions for purposes of uh, encouraging and promoting violence. We believe that institutional reform is uh, important to pave the way to ensure that the history is not only recorded but passed on to the future generations. So the revision of modules, for example, on the history of the Philippines is essential. According to Truth and Reconciliation Commission, uh, we found that uh, one root of the conflict is the gap between the rich and the poor. So if we want uh, to reduce the conflict, uh, I think that we have to change the structure of our economy by uh, reducing the gap between the rich and the poor. In Asia, some countries are making significant progress on reforming the military and other institutions involved in human rights violations. In others, authoritarian regimes are breaking down the institutional protection of citizens, like the right to speak and gather freely, and a fair trial for all those accused of a crime. We are now in the transition. We have a new president. And recent events uh, would, would point to a regression, at least uh, on the part of the police, because the police are now being accused of uh, committing uh, numerous violations and there have been thousands of, of killings uh, of civilians in supposedly uh, what they call as legitimate police operations. We thought uh, everything would be, would be smooth uh, after the peace agreement, but uh, based on the experiences of the past few years, then we, we are now realizing that that is a different and could be more difficult stage in the process. Political will is a classic problem. And I think uh, since there is a pattern in Southeast Asia and in Asia generally, that uh, the government seems unwilling and to some extent uh, trying to say that they are unable to provide uh, proper justice, uh, proper peace quality. I think we need to, to have a, a better networking among civil society. The first three elements, prosecution, seeking the truth, repairing victims' lives, deal, are dealing with those past violations. The fourth area of reform, guaranteeing non-repetition, that deals with the future.